welcome you tonight. Thank you for coming out, church family, family and friends, friends of the Diaz family. I can't think of a better way to spend a Friday evening than to just worship the Lord and celebrate. Today is a momentous occasion, and this is the ministry ordination of Christian and Christina Diaz. So I want to welcome all of family, extended family, those that are watching online from out of state, uh, we welcome you as well. This is a, a wonderful celebration, and I am just, let's clap, that is so good, and we're going to have a couple of opportunities to just clap and celebrate, but I just want to say at the very beginning, I just love you guys very, very much. This is such a huge honor and such a privilege uh, for me, for Sarah. Uh, but for the whole church family, we are just excited about this step in your life and also uh, in the life of the church. We're just thrilled by that. So I just want to take a few minutes and just share with you about ministry ordination. For some of you, this might be new to you, but this will really uh, connect us all as a church family. So what is ministry ordination? Well, it's, a, it's the recognition of a public position of authority to serve people. And so uh, that happens in the secular realm, but when it's in the church, uh, there's even a heavier weight or responsibility uh, that comes on somebody because they're, they're serving the church of Jesus Christ. And so uh, we are recognizing this public position. Uh, it's a position of authority, but it's a position to serve people. That's what it's all about. Uh, it's a heavy responsibility, but it's important to realize that God gifts someone. He gives them a, a spiritual gift to do it. He equips them, and then He anoints them. Uh, so then that, that gets really exciting because God gets in on the equation. And so He's calling you guys, but He's going to gift you. Uh, he's equipping you, and He's anointing you for that. Uh, so I've shared before, there's three aspects of this. There's the call the confirmation, and the commission. Uh, so when it comes to ministry, only God can call somebody. I didn't call Christian and Christina. The Lord called you. So only God can call someone uh, to the ministry. Uh, and that's really important uh, to realize. Uh, now, it's a, it's a call to an office. Now, when we talk about an office, that's a, that's a position of authority to, to serve. And it's important to note that we're all called to minister. Uh, we're all called and actually gifted to minister in different ways. But then God calls and gives some to minister in an office. So I want to show you two scriptures here. The first one is in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 6. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. So the Holy Spirit gifts or releases gifts to certain people. These are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. These are supernatural gifts that, that come from the Holy Spirit. Gifts like miracles and healings, and that's the Holy Spirit. But then it says in verse 5, there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Verse 6, there are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them and all men. God the Father, in verse 6, gives certain gifts to people. Those are found in Romans chapter 12. Those are our motivational gifts. Those are gifts to serve. Some people have a natural gift to lead, a natural gift to teach, and we can all work on those gifts. So we all have gifts. We can all flow in the supernatural gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. We can all develop the natural gifts that God has given us in, in Romans 12. But then in Ephesians 4, and this is out of verse 5 here, there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. When he says Lord here, he's talking about Jesus. Jesus gives us gifts to serve, and he calls us. So now look at Ephesians 4. And in verse, in verse 8, it says that Jesus gave gifts to, to people. And then in verse 11, it was he, Jesus, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. 
So he lists five office gifts, five uh, gifts that he gives to people. He calls them to that. There are some people that he, that, he, that he calls to an office. So I hope you can see the difference. We're all called to minister, and we're all gifted, but there are some that he calls to serve in an office, and that's the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. And so tonight we're talking about the call on Christian and Christina's life, that God has called you to the fivefold uh, ministry. He's called you to this, uh, this office. He wants to give you this authority to serve in, in this capacity. So only God can call someone to the ministry, but then it's confirmed in someone's heart. And that usually takes some time. God solidifies that. You guys have been journeying in this. You started feeling a call. God started speaking to you. But over time, it was, it was confirmed to you. And, and, and then that often happens through experiences, maybe through the prophetic, through God's word, other people prophesying into your life, supernatural events that, that work together, and it just confirms the call in your life. So God calls, but then it's confirmed in someone's heart. But then it's the church that recognizes the call and commission someone to ministry. And that's what we're doing as a church tonight. This is an amazing celebration because we've seen the call on their life. We've seen the faithfulness in their life. So what does the church do? Well, we see that the person is dedicated and committed to serving. We see that the person has the gifts and the grace to serve. Not everyone has these gifts. Not everyone has the, the grace to serve in this capacity. And then the church sees that the person has demonstrated the character and the maturity to serve. And that's important. So all of those things work together. So again, God calls. It's confirmed in our hearts, but then it's the church uh, that commissions. And so tonight, we're celebrating because we're recognizing and commissioning Christian and Christina to serve in pastoral ministry. Now, a few things that are really important that we just want to acknowledge tonight. They've been a faithful part of our church and our congregation for 10 years. Very, very faithful. It's been a joy to have them. And for the last five years, they've been serving as our youth leaders. They've served in seven years in youth ministry. The first two years we worked together, and I mentored you very closely in that, but the last five years, you, you, you have run with it. Uh, so for a total of seven years, they, they've been uh, involved in youth ministry. Now, the other uh, part of this is as they were being uh, trained and as God was equipping you and, and uh, training you in practical ministry, you were also being anchored in the Word. So at the same time, Christian got his degree at Freedom Bible College. And I love that because not only was he serving practically, but he was being anchored in the Word of God. During that time, Christina finished her degree at Faith Theological Seminary and, and Christian College. Uh, so both of you have had the academic training, uh, you've had the theology, but you're also, you've also had practical ministry experience. Uh, and so we've been mentoring you guys in, 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 pastoral, in pastoral leadership. So we're accepting them as having the spiritual call and the authority from the Lord to serve in the fivefold ministry. And we're installing them tonight very specifically as our youth pastors, but they will also, because they're going to be ordained, they'll have the authority to, to perform weddings, uh, uh, do the, all the civil duties of, of marriage and funerals, uh, and, and that, is, that is just an amazing, amazing privilege. So church, are you getting excited about accepting the Diaz's into this role of ministry. Amen. So I want to give you just a, a few personal things when it comes to, to ministry. Uh, I, I want to charge you on a few things. And I want to talk to you for just a few moments about your personal walk when it comes to the ministry and then the public service in your life. Now, one of the most intimate letters that was written or first and second Timothy. Uh, and this was Paul talking to Timothy. Paul was his, Timothy was his spiritual son. And so he had poured his life into him. They had spent a lot of time together. And I am really touched today because you're my spiritual son and daughter. You're our spiritual son 
and daughter. You have a beautiful heritage. Your parents are sitting behind you. Uh, but when it comes to this aspect, I've had the privilege of, of mentoring you uh, and walking me, with you in this. And so I've lifted a few principles out of First and Second Timothy uh, that I just want to share with you and encourage you in. Uh, the first one is this, hold on to the call. In other words, look the devil in the eye and say, I am called. Because you're going to have good days and bad days. We talked about this. We've spent a lot of time uh, in personal discipleship, especially the last seven weeks, uh, just meeting and talking and, and sharing things together. But one of the things we talked about was that nobody can talk you into the ministry. Yeah. And, and if, if, if nobody, if only God can call you into the ministry, uh, like if I could talk you into the ministry, then I could talk you out of the ministry. Right? But if God's called you, then you can look the devil in the eye and tell him that you're called. And so I, I just want to encourage you, hold on to the call. 1 Timothy 1, 18 and 19 says, in keeping with the prophecies, you've had a number of prophecies over your life, but in keeping with the prophecies, hold on and fight the battle well. So hold on to the call, no matter what. Just stay steady to the call. God's called you, and he's going to sustain you. The second thing is this, don't neglect your gift. And so 1 Timothy 4.14 says exactly that. Do not neglect your gift. And so the gift that God has given you and this ministry gift, uh, continue to exercise, always be serving the Lord in it. You know, there's that old adage that says, like a muscle, you have to exercise it. If you don't exercise that muscle, it becomes atrophied. You've got to exercise the gift. Don't neglect your gift. Just keep serving the Lord in what he has called you to do. So hold on, don't neglect the gift, and then keep growing. You know this scripture, 2 Timothy 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and co who correctly handles the word of truth. So always be growing. Always be studying the word of God. And one thing uh, that I love about you guys is that you can both really handle the word of God with integrity. You know how to interpret the text. You know how to preach the text. You know how to, how to, uh, how to get, live the text. Uh, but you guys, I just encourage you, keep growing. No matter, none of us have ever arrived. I'm just trying to learn a few things and share that with other people. But if you make that your heart, to just keep growing in the Lord. The fourth one is this, to fulfill your ministry duties. 2 Timothy 4, 5 says this, Keep your head in all situations. That's not easy in the ministry because you're going to be bombarded with all kinds of things. People that believe different things. People that have different convictions about things. You're going to be having to navigate all kinds of things. Just keep your head in all situations. Take a deep breath. Wait on the Lord. Seek the Lord about every single situation. Keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. There's going to be times that the ministry is wonderful. Overall, it's just wonderful. But there are a lot of tough times. I'm sorry about this microphone. There are a lot of tough times, but you just got to endure. Just don't give up because God is going to sustain you and he's going to give you the strength. And the times that you feel hurt, he's going to encourage you. The times that you feel down, he's going to lift you up. The times that you're going through a financial difficulty because sometimes ministry is a sacrifice. But if you endure hardship, you're going to be faithful to the call and you're going to make it to the end. So keep your head in all situations, endure hardship. Work at telling others the great news all the time. That's what this is all about. Share the good news, whether it's people who know the Lord and you're sharing the good news or it's evangelizing, but always keep that in front of you. This is about people. This is about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then the last thing is this, fulfill the duties of your ministry. So, that you're going to have duties, duties that God gives you, duties that you have to serve the people in the church, but just fulfill your duties. If you're faithful in that, God is going to bless you. And the fifth thing that I want to say is guard what has been entrusted to you. First Timothy 6, 20 to 21 says, guard what has been entrusted to your care. So God is giving you a ministry. He's giving you people and he wants you to guard that. It's a battle. You got to go to war for other people. You got to fight a spiritual battle for other people. 
You're laying down your life. I'm laying down my life. Sarah and I are laying our, down our lives for other people. But it's worth it. That's part of the call. That's the example of Christ. And so it, fulfill the duties of the ministry. Realize this is what? this. It's a high calling. It's a blessing. It's a joy. But we want to fulfill those duties. Continually laying down our lives. Now there's a pattern. God first, then your family, then your ministry. And that's really important. Put the Lord first and always take care of your family and then serve other people. So I just lifted five things out. You know I could share a whole lot more with you guys. But out of that personal letter, those two personal letters, just wanted to draw those things out of the text. So that's your private. That's your, that's your personal call. Now, there's a public uh, aspect to this. So your, your public service, just two scriptures I want to read to you uh, just to emphasize. The first one is to keep watch over the flock. So you got a bunch of sheep in here. We're a bunch of sheep. And the Lord wants us to keep watch over the flock. Listen to Acts 20, verse 28. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. This is how serious it is. So the flock that you have as youth pastors, the flock here at Freedom, uh, this is serious. Jesus purchased it with his, purchased us with his blood, and he wants us to keep watch over the flock. And then he wants us to serve. It's all about serving. 1 Peter 5.2 says this, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers. Not because you must, but because you're willing. And that's, a, that's one thing that has blessed me so many times is that you guys are just so willing to serve. You, you are such a joy. I tell you this all the time. You're such a joy to flow within the ministry because you just have such a heart to serve. You've never had an agenda. You've never wanted a position. You've just wanted to serve and to, and to love people. That just, that just blesses me beyond words. You guys are such a delight to work with. As I was praying about this, I was thinking about this today. You, you guys have more, you've had more youth workers than anyone in the history of youth ministry. And I was thinking about that. It's because you serve. No wonder you have a lot of people that serve you, because you are always serving. That's your heart. That's your lifestyle. It is just a beautiful thing. So in your public service, just remember to keep watch over the flock and, and serve the flock. And the third aspect of this charge, and, and then we'll go to prayer, is your spiritual mantle. Tonight there's a mantle that's coming on you. Now, God has been increasing the anointing in you as you have served. It comes through serving. It comes through being obedient to the Lord. God increases the anointing. But in the Old Testament, when a person was called, God would train them. And then they were anointed. We could give multiple examples of that, like David. David was anointed, oil poured over him. Uh, people uh, that served the Lord. Elijah mentored Elisha. Uh, and, and then the Lord, he picked up Elijah's mantle. It's this idea of a mantle. It's, a, it's this idea uh, of God putting a, a new mantle of authority on him. That's what's going to happen tonight. So in the Old Testament, we see that. Jesus, Jesus, he, he called his disciples. Again, only Jesus can call, right? Jesus calls his disciples, but then he trained them. He trained them, and then he anointed them for the task. So, so be encouraged tonight. You, you will be anointed for the task. You can always rely heavily on God's love and, and on the anointing. And then, and then Paul and Timothy. What, what, what did Paul do? Well, Paul... Paul, he, uh, he, he, he was Timothy's spiritual father. He mentored him, uh, but then he taught him. He trained with him, uh, and then he imparted to him. He released something to him. Uh, and so long-term uh, impartation comes through discipleship. I, I told you this when we, when we were meeting. I, I was brought to tears, but... MC, I, I was listening to you, to you preach and teach, and, and I, I just brought a smile to my face because I, I thought, he sounds like me. <laughs> and I, I meant that as a compliment, I, 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 but I did. It just, it just blessed me beyond words. I thought, we've, we've got the same DNA. 
You've got the same heart. You've got the same. Now you have your personality and your giftedness and your style. But there is something, something really similar there. And so, so in this process tonight, we just, we just really want to, uh, we're going we're gonna to impart to you and a new level of authority and mantle is going to come on you. Amen. So, Christian and Christina, do you accept this call on your life? Yeah, and are you willing, are you willing to accept the call from the Lord and, and to serve the church in this capacity? Yeah. So with that in mind, I'm going to invite you to, to just come up and and uh, would you guys just celebrate them? Come on up here. And, <laughs> just going to ask you to share a little bit with, with the church family. They took me to church every single week. And so I came to accept Christ when I was nine years old, and I remember it. I'm a visual learner. I just remember. I remember everything. But I remember that really distinctly because at nine years old, I, I really needed Christ, and I needed a relationship with him. And so that began my relationship with him. It wasn't until I was 18 um, that the Lord called me to seminary. And it was a really big deal. Um, we were actually engaged at the time. It was a big deal because I was the first one in my family to go to a university, and I was so excited, and the Lord made miracles in order for me to get to that university. But I'll, I remember the Lord calling me to seminary and telling me to change, and it really didn't make sense to anybody else. Everyone was like, what are you doing? Like, you were going for a psychology major, and now you want to go to seminary. And usually when I feel, like personally for me in my life, when it doesn't make sense to anybody else, that means I'm doing something right with God. And so um, I changed. I remember you supported me. You were like, okay. Um, and I started seminary, and it took me 12 years <laughs> to finish that degree. Yeah, because of life. But um, in that, I continued to serve in ministry. And one of the things I learned about myself is I love to serve the body of Christ. Um, it's, it's my spiritual gift. It just comes so easily. I don't have to think about it. I just do it. Um, I love that. And um, in the past 10 years in joining Freedom, you know, I'm loud. You guys know that. I'm loud. I'm talkative. But the Lord started calling me very softly and quietly to pastoral ministry. And in that, um, I started to have a passion um, for specifically to see people free. And so that began also my counseling degree, my, my master's I started. Um, that's going to take me another 12 years. But um, I started that degree. And what I learned was I have a passion to see people set free, for the people in the body of Christ in ministry to be walking free. Um, I saw a lot when I was younger, and I just said, God, I want to I, I want to live for you, but I want to be set free. I don't want to be bound by anything. And um, when we're free, we serve, we love God, we're a blessing to others. And so that's what I wanted, and um, that's where I'm at now. <laughs> and um, I love God, and I truly, I love you guys, and I love serving. And um, I have felt that call in my life and with Christian, and yeah. I'm done. <laughs> it feels different being up here now. I'm usually here on Sunday, but hold on. Um, I just want to say I, I am truly humbled just seeing everybody here in support of what God is doing. You know, usually you get the you get the good job, you get uh, you get great job. Um, Thank you for serving these kids. Thank you for taking care of my kids. But it's all individual. Just seeing everybody here together, it's just great. It's, it's incredible. I'm very humbled. So thank you for coming out here and serving. Um, I came to the Lord. Um, actually, I came to have a relationship with the Lord at a woman's house. Some of you have heard this story. 
I was the photographer, and um, I was 18, and and the Lord just hit me there. And then since then, um, it's been a ride. It's been a journey. God has constantly uh, poked at me and says, "Hey, you know this this is this is what you're called to do." Uh, we served at a at a at a, as a youth youth um, leaders at another church, and that really just um, kind of opened me up to the whole youth ministry, and I loved it. I love serving the youth. Um, I love teaching the youth. I love being with the youth, and um, the youth know that that I'm always on their uh, media. Um, but it's because I love them, and I know that God has so much more in store for them, and, and I just want to see the youth on fire for the Lord. That's that's my passion, and um, I went off on a tangent there. Um, but being here in freedom has really encouraged me, and it has Pastor Eric, Pastor Sarah, they have challenged me, and um, that's what I need. I am a man of challenges. I need to be challenged, and it's like Pastor Eric knew that. And um, and then it just growing every single time I'm up here, every single time I'm with you, I just feel more of that passion, you know, more of that passion growing, more of that call growing. If for those of you that don't know me, as a young kid, I was an introvert and I hated public speaking. I will not, I would, I did not like getting up in front of any, anybody to speak, not even to one or two people. Um, I was very shy. So we know this is a calling from God because I'm up here. <laughs> but um, it's, it's been a journey. It's been a fun journey. It's been a fun ride. Um, and I know that uh, there's so much more, so much more to come. And, and Pastor Eric, just thank you for, for the challenge. Thank you for believing in me, for trusting me. Parents, thank you for trusting us with your kids. And um, again, there's so much more to come. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited, and I know God is, is doing some good things, and I wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for him. Give him all the glory and all the honor. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, can you guys just stand here for a second? I'm going to invite everyone to stand to your feet, if you would. And uh, so Christian and Christina are accepting the call on their life to pastoral ministry and to serve specifically here at, at Freedom. Uh, church, can you accept them in this pastoral role? If you're excited, let's celebrate them today. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 We're excited. So I'm going to ask you guys to step down if we could. And Paul, would you come up to the piano? And if someone could move this for me here, please. And uh, if you guys could face me, and I'm going to ask your your family to, uh, your kids to just come on up here. We're going to do a couple of things. Sarah's going to pray over your family, uh, and then I'm going to impart to you guys, okay? Now, uh, just step up a little bit closer if we could, because now I'm going to ask uh, our leaders and, and anybody that feels that to come on up uh, behind them. If we have any pastors, I see my dad here, uh, just come on up behind them, and then... Uh, and then anyone else who feels led in our church, I want you just I want you guys to just come up behind them. I like that. I like seeing your team just keep coming. Dad, thank you for being here. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, and uh, others can come. Come. There's plenty of room. I want I want them to have this sense of of surrounding surrounding them. Yeah, Pastor Sunil, I see you here. Come on up here. Another pastor in ministry. It's coming. And we do this at Freedom. And any of our other leaders serving in ministry, everyone's welcome. Everybody's welcome if you just feel like. The reason why I do it this way is I want them to have this sense that they're surrounded by a family. That they're not in this alone. You guys have people that love you and support you. In this ministry, they're going to be, they're going to be encouraging. Praise the Lord. All right, now, before we pray, I want, I want everybody to just begin to pray for them. Begin to pray in the spirit. Come on, pray in the spirit. Pray in your heart language. It can be Spanish. It can be Korean. Whatever language and tongues, just, just begin to pray. I want you to pray.
on, pray, 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 intercede, intercede. Come on, begin to release the blessing of the Lord on them. Pray for their health. Come on, pray for the health of their family. Come on, pray for finances. Pray for financial provision. Pray for greater revelation in their life. Pray for the strength to serve. Pray for the grace to serve. Pray for endurance, endurance to be released to them. I love the fact that um, the way God designed the church, he patterned it after family. And um, I grew up as a pastor's kid. And so what I've seen is that when he calls a mom and dad, he calls the whole family. He calls the whole family. And the grace that's on your mom and dad to step into this new mantle, he'll give each one of you. He's going to give that mantle to you too. And there's provision. There's provision that you'll never feel apart from what your mom and dad are doing. You'll always feel apart. And you know, there's something unique and special about a family. There's always a ministry. And having walked through that myself and having children who've walked through that their whole lives, I want you to know that God loves you. He has a plan for you. It's not any different because you're from what your mom and daddy are doing. It's not any different, but it also comes with special opportunities. So keep your eyes open. God has amazing things for the three of you. Okay, I want you to know that, and I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for the Diaz family. I thank you that when you call, when you call them, you call a whole family. And Lord, you've made provision and grace for each one of them. And so, Father, I just pray for your safety in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you surround Elijah. You surround Noah, you surround Michaela with a wall of fire in Jesus' name. That no weapon formed against them shall prosper. That you will keep them hidden under the shadow of your wings, Lord, until it's the right time for them to be revealed and set in Jesus' name. Father, I just pray that you would surround them with safety physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Lord, that they would feel your presence like never before that as a family, as they minister together, it would just be incredible experience, Lord, that they would go to another level of unity as a family. I thank you, Father, for that. Lord, I thank you for the gifts that are, I already see blooming and blossoming in each one of them. I thank you for the way that you are drawing them to yourself, Lord. Whatever their future looks like, whatever you have for them, Lord, we know it's going to be good, but I thank you that here at church that we can see those gifts flourishing and growing in Jesus' name. And Father, I just pray that they would never feel alone, that they would never feel different other than. But Lord, I just pray that you would bring them the right friends. You would bring them friends who would encourage them. You would bring them friends who would just love them and bring up the best in them. And Father, I do pray for MC and Christina. Lord, I pray that you give them wisdom. I pray that you give them wisdom. That this is a unique this is unique, a unique situation. And Lord, I pray that you just give them wisdom and how to bring out the best in their kids, how to disciple their children, how to minister to them, how to be great examples. In Jesus' name, you'd give them wisdom. And Father, I just pray for their marriage. Lord, I pray that their friendship would just grow. I already see such a strong marriage. I already see such an amazing friendship. It's quite inspirational. But I also know that the enemy hates marriage. He hates family. And so, Father, I pray that you would guard and protect their marriage and their friendship in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that any fiery dart of the enemy that's trying to come against them now and in the future would be stopped even before it starts in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray that you would um, cause them to be able to prioritize their time, to carve out time to pursue each other. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I just thank you for this family. I speak blessing 
blessing, wave after wave, blessing upon blessing in the name of Jesus over this family. Lord, you love the Diaz's. You love them. Overtake them, I ask in Jesus' name. Overtake them by your blessing, Lord. Surprise them. Lord, I pray that you just equip them. You just equip them. Equip them in Jesus' name. Lord, who you call, you equip. Who you call, you also qualify. And Lord, I thank you that you have qualified this family. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed said, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Woo! Glory. All right. Children, step aside. We got to have a little bit of room here. All right. You guys hold hands. Get ready. Are you guys ready for this? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. E ka. Ye binza ba iso he kiende. Vau ba bri ma kundole he ta in jika ha kele. Breke he nda ha iso koto holo. Ye kinda ike ya iso bo ye beki bahala. Ye vriska nzu tu ye te ha. Ha su kobo ye mengenza la bahala. Ye si kabahata la iso kobo hola. Ye brenza bahala, ye boska bahala, ye beka babunza ye tikende. Sobohulo bo ye besita. Spirit of the Lord said, my son, my son, you have been so faithful. And I've been raising you up and training you for such a time as this. And a new mantle is coming upon you. And you have a teaching gift. And that teaching gift, I'm going to increase the revelatory ministry of the Holy Spirit. You've been praying for that. You've been asking for that. You haven't even told anybody that. You haven't even told Eric that. But God is saying tonight, I'm going to give you a new teaching anointing and expand the revelatory knowledge. God says tonight that I'm also going to put the preach on you. I'm going to put the preach on you. I'm going to add a little bit of the preaching on you that is going to increase. You will not just teach, but you will teach slash preach, says the Spirit of the Lord, says the Spirit of the Lord. And you've been longing for signs and wonders. You've been longing for healings in your life. And God's going to begin to release healing in your life. God is going to begin to release miracles in your life. And you will be a leader like Jesus, who is the greatest servant leader ever. And sometimes you've said to yourself, you said, Lord, I, I feel like more of a servant than a leader. I feel like my gifting is more of a servant than a leader. But Jesus says to you tonight, my son, you are a servant leader. You're a servant leader and you will step into that capacity of leading and commanding men and commanding people uh, because it's a leadership gift and mantle that is going to come upon you says the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Lord, tonight I just impart to Christian. And, Lord, I pray that everything that you put inside of me would be released to Christian tonight. I pray over your feet tonight. The Spirit of the Lord says you will travel. You will travel. God is going to increase. This is just the beginning of you and me traveling together. I see Latin America opening before you. You will take a significant trip to Cuba You will take a significant trip to Cuba. You're going to reach back into your heritage. But you're going to bring the freedom and the power of the Lord on that island nation. Says the Spirit of God. Says the Spirit of God. Lord, he will travel. But it's not just Latin America. I see Africa opening up to you tonight. I see Asia opening up to you tonight. I see doors opening up to you tonight. Lord, I impart to MC tonight. I impart to Christian tonight. The nations. And so, Lord, everything that you have given me, Lord, I just pray that, that what took me years uh, to learn, I, I pray, Lord, uh, that you would just accelerate it in my brother. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Lord, I pray for the spirit of boldness to come upon him. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And so, Lord, I give him everything I got tonight.
Some of you have never seen that before. That is just the power of the Lord. You can ask him how that felt after. I guarantee you, he is okay. We didn't shoot him tonight. Christina, I love you. Don't worry. It's going to be a lot more gentle. My daughter, my daughter, I've had my hand on you ever since you were a little princess. And even though you've been through some hard times, I, I've kept my hand on you and just protected you. And even as you shared tonight that you have a desire to see people set free, my precious daughter, I'm putting a new anointing on you for deliverance and freedom. And you will move with such compassion. And as you weep and cry, you'll see people healed. But the Spirit of the Lord says, as you laugh, as you carry the joy of the Lord, you will impart that to others. And so the Spirit of the Lord says tonight, you will move in such inner healing. You will move in such counseling. God has given you tonight wisdom beyond your years. And he's given you supernatural wisdom. You'll know exactly when to say things. You'll know exactly what to say. You'll know when to listen, and you'll know when to speak. And the Spirit of the Lord says, my daughter, I've given you such capacity, an enormous capacity to get things done. And you will have the grace and the strength to, to teach your kids and to be a mom to your children. And to also embrace those that need ministry. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Lord, I just impart to Christina tonight. I impart the revelatory ministry of counseling to her and the freedom of the Lord. I see the spirit of the Lord tonight. I'm imparting to you a deliverance anointing, Christina, and that which God has graced me. in, As God released healing to your husband. He will flow in that. I'm releasing deliverance to you tonight. You will see some deliverances. <laughs> I give that to her tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. That authority and fire to drive out demons and to bring healing, inner healing, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, I just I ask right now that everything that is inside of me, that you would impart to her, you would release to her. And I thank you that you're going to take Christina to a whole new level. Man, I feel the fire of the Lord. Man, I feel the fire of the Lord in the house. <laughs> well, praise God. We don't know if you've been to any other ordination ceremonies, but this way we do it. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. So I should explain, in case you're visiting with us, but what you heard was, and I was in another realm, but 
what you heard, I spoke in tongues. That's just a supernatural language. And then God released it, broke into this realm, got our attention, but then gave the interpretation of that as personal prophecies to them. And then when the power of the Lord comes on someone with that kind of strength, you just you just can't stand up. There's an intensity. There's a there's a fire that comes. I could teach on that and explain all that to you, but most of you are with us heart and soul on it. Amen. Church, would you lift your hands? Just stretch your hand out to them right now. Yeah. And just say this out loud. Say, Christian and Christina, we love you. We're so grateful for you. Thank you for serving. And we accept you with delight and with joy to be pastors here, to be our youth pastors, to serve in pastoral ministry. And we celebrate the call on your life. Lord, bless them now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. Amen. You know, I was thinking about this. Oh, we got to go. We got to go. Well, it is Friday night. We got to go. We got to have, have some snacks. But I was thinking about this today that uh, in the Old Testament, it says the Lord selected somebody from among the people to serve. And we are so blessed because you guys are part of us. 10 years, serving for seven years. What a natural step for now to you to serve in this capacity. 